The open carry of firearms in Florida is illegal. It's been that way since 1987 when Florida Statute 790.053 passed into law. Just because that's the law doesn't mean there aren't exceptions. To find the exceptions, we turn our attention to Florida Statute 790.25. We'll get to that statute briefly, but it's complicated to understand and it's probably best to have some historical context to understand the mindset at the time the law was passed. Florida Statute 790.25 came into existence in 1965. Back then, in Florida, as well as many other states, the open carry of weapons was not seen as offensive. To openly carry a weapon showed you had no ill intent. To the contrary, if you concealed your weapon, the idea was, what are you trying to hide? You must be up to no good. At the time, concealed carry and firearms permits were handed out at the county level by the local officials. This law prohibited those local officials from passing ordinances that would infringe upon your Second Amendment rights to open and concealed carry. The law puts into black and white the circumstances in which a Florida resident or person in Florida can use, carry, and possess a firearm. These are the enumerated black and white statutory exceptions. The law says there might be other exceptions out there for other lawful purposes. So this list doesn't limit, but this gives you the baseline to work from. That can be dangerous territory because you don't have anything to point back to as an exception. I hope this video brings you and other Florida gun owners peace of mind knowing that you're in compliance with the law. You're an experienced trial attorney and you're telling me that when the judge says, I'm excluding this, you just to take it upon yourself to put it in because you think that you've found a way around it? Come on. I thought this is my good faith explanation to you. And if you want to yell at me, you can. My good faith feeling this morning after watching that testimony was you had left the door open a little bit. Now we had something new and I was going to probe it. I don't believe you. When you say that, that you were acting in faith, good faith, I don't believe that, okay? I have a client right now who called 911 to report a mugging. When the police came to investigate, her world was turned upside down when the police arrested her. She didn't understand the complexities of the law, she didn't know what to say, and she ended up in handcuffs. I don't want that to happen to you. Let's start by looking at the statute from an overview standpoint to understand kind of where we're going. The first section of the statute addresses the people, places, and situations that are not protected. The second section we're going to address is the lawful uses provision. This is the main operating section of the statute and it gives us all of our enumerated exceptions. The final section of the statute gives you the lawful authority to carry your firearm or other weapon concealed and securely encased within your private conveyance. It's important to note that these substantive provisions of law are cloaked with a procedural layer of the preamble and a construction clause that default towards gun ownership and lawful gun use. So any questions we have, we default towards lawful gun use. Let's jump into that now. Subsection two, uses not authorized, subsection A. This section does not authorize the carrying of a concealed weapon without a permit as provided by 790.01 and 790.02. 790.01 says you can't carry concealed. 790.02 says the police can arrest you if they find you carrying concealed. Subsection 2B. The protections of this section do not apply to the following. One, a person who's been adjudicated mentally incompetent, who is addicted to the use of narcotics or any similar drug, or is habitual or chronic alcoholic or person using weapons or firearms in violation of any of these laws. 2B2. Vagrants and other undesirable persons as defined in 856.02. That law has been repealed. We'll talk about that in just a minute. On to number three. A person in or about a place of nuisance as defined in 823.05 unless such person is there for law enforcement or some other lawful purpose. If you are carrying your weapon concealed, it's deemed as a breach of peace and the police officers are encouraged to arrest you. Florida Statute 790.25 does not protect the mentally incompetent, does not protect those addicted to alcohol or drugs, and does not protect vagrants. 
that vagrant statute was deemed unconstitutional. Jacksonville Sheriff's Office arrested a black man they called just a common thief, turned out to be a racial case, and the statute was overturned. Florida State Statute 790.25 does not protect you while you're engaged in these activities. And it may not protect you while you're at these locations. Subsection 3, Lawful Uses. The provisions of 790.053, Open Carry, and 790.06, the Concealed Carry Permitting Process, do not apply in the following instances, and despite subsections, it is lawful for the following persons to own, possess, and lawfully use firearms and other weapons, ammunition, and supplies for lawful purposes. I want to pause here for a second because I've got some of this stuff wrong in my prior videos. Thankfully, the president of Florida Carry reached out to me in the comments and engaged in a discussion. He pointed out where I might be seeing things wrong, and I did a deep dive in the historical analysis as well as some case law regarding Florida gun law. I'd like to thank attorney John Gutmatcher. His article on the historical analysis of 790.25 was fabulous. It's intense, but good. Put a link to that down in the description. This opening sentence of the lawful use section gives us all the power. It essentially negates the open carry prohibition and allows us to open carry if we have one of the exceptions. But it does not grant you power to carry with your concealed carry permit under the provisions of this law. If you're going to carry concealed, you better be able to point to the exception under 790.06. Hopefully that's clear for everyone. The first six exceptions to this statute are employment-based, primarily government. If you're a government employee and your position involves the open carry of firearms as part of your job description, your employer can authorize you to carry that weapon openly while performing your job duties, on the way to do the job duties, while training for the job duties, and the like. Similarly, if you work as a guard for a bank or for an armored car carrier, you're gonna to default to your employer there. They're gonna have attorneys. They're gonna map out the legal requirements on you to lawfully carry, and they'll make the determination whether you can or cannot carry. The first sections you really have a control over is subsection G, regularly enrolled members in a gun club. If you're part of a gun club that either buys, sells, or transfers firearms to or from the government, or target shoots, or skeet shoots, or anything like that, you're allowed to open carry a firearm while doing it, on the way there, and on the way back. Subsection H, a person who is engaged in fishing, camping, or hiking, or going to or returning from a fishing, camping, or hunting expedition. I hate to interrupt, but I gotta share. The backside of this YouTube channel is a full service law firm, veteran owned, serving gun owners in Florida. If you or someone you love needs to hire an attorney in Florida, Give our office a call. Subsection I, a person engaged in the business of manufacturing or repairing or dealing in firearms or their agents while engaged in the process. J and K work together, a person engaged in target practice, both indoors and outdoors. And that's on the way to, while doing it, and on the way back. Subsection L, private conveyance. You can open carry a firearm inside your private conveyance so long as it's securely encased. Let's read that definition. Go to 790.001, subsection 17. Securely encased means in a glove compartment, whether or not locked, snapped in a holster, in a gun case, whether or not locked, in a zippered gun case, or in a closed box or container, which requires a lid or cover to be opened for access. Recall, this does not allow you to carry concealed. That's another part of the statute. This is open carry only. Subsection L also addresses public conveyance. You can carry a weapon or firearm openly on a public conveyance so long as it's securely encased and not in your manual possession. Subsection M, a person while carrying a pistol unloaded in a secured wrapper, concealed or otherwise from the place of purchase to his home or place of business or to a place of repair or back to his home or place of business. Subsection N, a person possessing arms in his home or place of business. 
Subsection O and P, those are the private investigators for the Public Defender's Office or Regional Conflict Council. And subsection Q is for tactical medics. All three of those final exceptions are going to require some type of government employment or some type of approval from an employer. The final section of the statute covers the concealed carry of a weapon or firearm inside your vehicle. Subsection 3, the lawful use provision, allowed the open carry of a firearm under subsection L, private conveyance. This portion of the statute allows you to carry a concealed firearm within your vehicle so long as it's securely encased or not readily accessible. If you're comfortable with open carry, the next step in the process is stand your ground laws. We're going to do a case analysis of one of my stand your ground hearings. You'll hear the judge tell the story. Three guys drink into the parking lot of a liquor store. One of them ends up trying to stab another one. My client jumps in to stop the stabbing and he gets arrested for battery. Thanks for watching. No matter where you go, what you do, try to make things a little bit better.